All right, folks, so today we're going to be doing a bit of a project. So this is going to be an install of a GDMU uh, clone card for the Dreamcast. Now, what this is, is a replacement for the GD ROM drive. So if you have a Dreamcast, which is getting a little bit older, having a few issues reading GD ROMs, uh, obviously you can use this to replace the GD ROM drive. Um, and it will actually allow you to play your games uh, in GDI format from a flash memory card. So looking at the card itself, uh, there's really not much to it, to be honest. There's obviously just a couple of chips you can see on the front there. Um, taking a look at the back, again, just got more chips. I don't really know much about the technology, so I won't claim to. Um, you can see here there's a reset button on the front. And also this is the uh, memory card slot where you can put your SD card, your flash card. So for this, I'm just going to be using a 32 gig uh, sand disk card when we're setting this up. Now, there are a couple of different options as far as installing this. It actually comes with a couple of uh, pegs which sit in the Dreamcast. Um, but I'm not actually going to be using those. I'm going to be using these handy dandy uh, 3D printed mounting uh, brackets. So these actually serve a dual purpose, and I'll get into that uh, as we go through the installation process. And just a real quick shout out to Joel. Uh, big thank you to him for taking the time to print these out for me. Okay, so here's the Dreamcast that we're going to be using today. Uh, this Dreamcast I've had for a good number of years now, and uh, it's finally starting to have a few issues with the GD-ROM drive reading discs. So I figured this one would be a good one to try and breathe a little bit more life into. So the first thing we need to do is check the Dreamcast to make sure that it's actually compatible with the GDMU. Not all versions are. So the easiest way to check is just flip it over, and then if you look on the informational sticker on the bottom of the system, uh, take a look for the region designation, which will either be NTSCJ, U, uh, or PAL for uh, European regions. If your system has the number one in a circle sitting right next to the region designation, uh, like this one does here, then you'll be able to use the GDMU. So then this one, uh, we're good to go. So now that we've confirmed that the console is compatible, we can start disassembly. First thing to do is remove the modem, which sits in the top left-hand corner of the console, as you see there. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward, it just pops off. Then looking at the console with the modem removed, you'll actually see four screws, one in each corner. And this is all that holds the Dreamcast's casing together. So this is actually pretty straightforward, nice and easy to get into. Okay, so now we've got all the screws out, we'll flip the console over and lift off the top of the case. And then with the case removed, you can see the GD-ROM drive, which is what we're going to be replacing today. The GD-ROM unit itself is held in by four screws. So they are in the top corners uh, of the drive. So we'll take those out real quick and then the drive should be free. You can remove it as soon as the screws are taken out just by pulling up gently on the drive unit itself and it should just pop straight out. All right, perfect. So now that the GD-ROM drive's out of the way, um, I'm actually gonna do one other project while I'm inside the console here, while I've got it all opened up. Um, I'm actually going to make a modification to the power supply unit. Now the reason I'm gonna do this is because now that the Dreamcast has no physical disk drive in it, um, and the GDMU uses less power to run, there is actually a little bit more power running through the power supply than need be, which can cause excessive heat. And I will preface this by saying that I'm not an electrician and I'm not an engineer, so please do this at your own risk. So to remove the power supply board, uh, there's actually only two screws holding it in, uh, along with a cable which connects it to the main motherboard. So first we'll disconnect the cable connecting it to the motherboard and we'll remove those two screws real quick and as soon as they're out of the way you can actually remove the power supply board just by gently pulling up on it like we did on the GD-ROM. Just one quick note, there is a small clip that sits on the side of the casing itself which may need to be pulled back when you are taking this out as well. Okay, so now with the power supply out, what we're going to be doing is disabling the 12 volt rail on the power supply board. And we're going to do that by removing the power regulator. Now there are a couple of different types of power supply board depending on the model of Dreamcast you have and apparently it varies by region as well. 
So if you're unsure or if your power supply doesn't look exactly the same as the one I have here, please be sure to check before you make any modifications. So the first thing we're going to do to disable the 12 volt rail is remove one of the capacitors here on the power supply board. And all we need to do there is unscrew this screw here and then desolder the capacitor underneath, which we'll do in a second. And we also need to remove the resistor, which you'll see on the bottom side of the power supply unit as well. So for this, you will need to use a soldering iron. Um, I'm not brilliant with this, so I'm going to speed this up quite rapidly. Since it did take me a couple of minutes to take care of, I'm sure if you have any kind of skill using a soldering iron, uh, this shouldn't be too big of a job. All right, so first we'll remove the screw, and then that will allow us to remove the capacitors that we need to. So again, I'm going to speed this up for a second, just so you don't have to deal with my poor soldering skills. All right, so now all that's taken care of, that's all the work we'll need to do with the soldering iron today. So we can put all that stuff away. And you'll see on the power supply unit that the capacitors are both gone. Um, this again will just allow the Dreamcast to run a little bit cooler. And now we're done with that, we can actually get back onto the installation of the GDMU. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you do have a couple of options as far as installation goes on this. The GDMU actually comes with a set of pegs uh, which support the board in the machine. Um, however, I decided I wanted to do an internal uh, mounting bracket to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, I found a design online and um, had that 3D printed for me. The benefit of doing this, if you can do this, I would recommend it. Um, the benefit of doing this is that it replicates the shape of the original GD-ROM drive. Um, so therefore the airflow going through the console is, would be exactly the same as it was if there was a GD-ROM drive still in there. Again, this is optional. Uh, however, I have heard and I have read that some folks have reported that their systems run um, a little bit hotter without these inserts being added. Now you notice I've already reinstalled the power supply unit and that does need to be done before you can install the GDMU unit itself. So the first thing we need to do is install the bottom part of the bracket and that just sits where the GD-ROM drive used to sit. There are a couple of screw holes in there which you'll see will line up um, where the original GD-ROM drive was. And then it's just a case of taking the GDMU card and lining up the connector to the motherboard and pushing on that real gently just to make the connection uh, and then screwing it down. So once that's all in place and tightened up nicely, we'll wanna take the lid of the console and turn that upside down and the top half of the bracket actually sits in the lid itself. So there's actually a small recess which lines up with a peg on the edge of the GD-ROM drive bay. So it's just a case of matching that up, putting a little bit of pressure on it so that the bracket holds. And then it's time to just double check your work. So look in here, it looks like we've got everything installed correctly. The mounting bracket lines up nicely. Um, the GDMU is tightened down just the way it should be. And it's time to put the lid back on. Now putting the system back together is just as simple as it was taking it apart. Obviously there's just the four screws that need to go in. Um, I did notice when I was putting this together that the top bracket did shift a little bit. Um, so if you just double check that before you tighten all your screws up, um, you should be good to go. And now we've put everything back together, let's pop the lid of the Dreamcast open and see what the GDMU looks like installed. So obviously this looks a little bit different than it did when we started. I think that the GDMU looks really nice in there. It is kind of weird to see the Dreamcast without the GD-ROM drive, but uh, neat nonetheless. And I definitely think that the extra effort put in to get a hold of the mounting brackets uh, makes the install look a lot cleaner. 
So here's just a couple of close-up shots so you can see what everything looks like when it's all done. And I've put the uh, memory card in there as well for uh, reference. All right, so the final step that we need to take to get all of this working is get the memory card set up with the software that the GDMU needs to run. So let's hop over to the computer real quick and I'll show you how to do that too. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that your SD card is formatted to FAT32 file system type. Once you've done that, you'll just need to locate and download the GDMU software. And I've left a link for the site that I used for this in the comments below. Now, there are a couple of different places you can locate this. So have a look around, but I think they're all pretty much the same at this point. So once you've got the software downloaded, it will more than likely come in a RAR file. Extract that to a folder on your desktop. Go into that folder and locate the GDMU SD folder and open that up. And then within there, you'll want to run the gdmusd.exe file, and that'll open the software. Okay, great. So now we're in the SD manager software. So there's a couple of things that you want to make sure are checked before you start adding files to your SD card. So you always want to make sure that the menu checkbox is checked. That actually installs the menu for the Dreamcast to boot from. And then you do have two other checkboxes here under the patch heading. So you've got one for VGA, and what this does is patch the file to support VGA. Now, I've had intermittent success with this. Certain games will work just fine, and uh, other games just refuse to boot. So that's kind of hit and miss, but I'd leave that one checked anyway. And then the bottom checkbox is region. So what that will do, it will patch it so that the GDI files are region free. So you'll want to do that too. The drop down box underneath the region checkbox gives you the option. If you want your games to be specifically NTSC or PAL, you can select that from there. But I usually go with free. So once you've made sure that your options are checked, double check in the drive option in the top left there to make sure that the software is actually pointing towards the SD card that you want to write on. And if it's not, just go into the drop down and select the correct drive and then you can start adding the games. So what you would do is click the plus button that's in the top right hand corner and navigate to your GDI files. So when you press the plus button, a dialog box will pop up and you'll see all your files listed. Navigate to wherever you're storing your GDI or CDI files and just double click to add that file. And I'm using a GDI file of the Dreamcast Generator 1 demo disk, which I've got floating around here just for demonstration purposes. So we'll select that one and add it to the card. So once you've selected the file, you'll notice it drops into the menu list here. And this is where you can use the up or down buttons to change the order of the files. Once you're happy with all the files that are going to be going on the card and the order that they're in, you can click the save button down in the bottom right hand corner and you'll get a prompt to see if you want to customize the menu. Now, I usually do this because uh, GDI files are not always named the way that I want them uh, to cooperate with my OCD. So if you click that, another dialog box will open up, and this shows all of the individual items that are going to be written to the card. You'll notice here that there's file number one named GDMU. Now, this is the menu uh, which the software has created so that the Dreamcast can boot from it. And then in this screen, what you can do is just go in and make any changes to the names, file names. This will be the display name that comes up on the menu. So this one, the file is reading as Dreamcast Generator, and I think I want to change this so it is Dreamcast Generator Volume 1. So all you need to do for that is select the entry and then just type in manually whatever you want the menu to read. Once you have everything set up the way you want it, all you need to do is click the Done button and the SD card will automatically start compiling. Now this can take just a couple of minutes depending on how many files that you're adding to the card. And I'm going to speed this up just a little bit just so we're not waiting on it for too long. So once the files are finished right into the card, there will be a prompt just to let you know that the process is complete. Just click the OK button and it's all done. While you're in here, just double check to make sure everything looks OK. If you do need to make changes, you can just follow the same process over again and it will rewrite the card. But once you've confirmed everything is good, then you are good to go.
So I thought it might be nice to show you how the games are running through the GDMU just to see if there's any difference between the GDI files running through the console as opposed to the disc. So let's hop over to the Dreamcast real quick and we'll take a look. So booting the console up obviously has the original Dreamcast splash screen and intro, so no difference there, um, just as if it was booting into a game itself. And then as soon as the intro sequence is done, you'll see the GD menu. Now, the GD menu is where you'll select your game. It's fairly straightforward. You just head down the list. Obviously, I only have one game on here, but you just head down the list, pick the game that you want, uh, hit play, and the game will boot. There are a bunch of options on this, but I'm not going to go through those today. Uh, the options menus are pretty straightforward, so um, you can have a play around in those. You really can't break anything by playing with it. Okay, so when you hit the start button, this boots exactly the same way that a standard GD-ROM would with the Dreamcast splash screen there, as you would expect to see. And I don't see any major difference in the load times. Um, but then again, I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison. So here we are in the Dreamcast Generator Volume 1 demo disc. And I do apologize, I forgot how obnoxious the sound effects were on this menu screen. But we'll scroll through here real quick just to see what's on the disc. Now this was an early demo disc, so there's a whole bunch of launch titles on here and a couple of videos as well. But I think for today's purposes, what we'll take a look at is Sonic Adventure The Trial, which should be coming up here in just a second. Wait for a second while this loads. And as you can see, everything looks exactly the same as it would if this was a standard GD-ROM. The beauty of doing this kind of modification is that this is a standard GD-ROM image file. So there should be no difference between the way that the Dreamcast interprets the GDI file or a GD-ROM. So as you can see with the gameplay, there's no kind of slowdown, no issues with the sound, uh, no graphical tears, uh, anything like that. So like I say, the Dreamcast interprets this as just a standard GD-ROM disc running through the machine. Um, and I think you'll agree that uh, everything looks great. And just as a side note, the video capture for this was taken using a Hyperken Dreamcast 2 HDMI adapter. That's the standard way I hook up my Dreamcast to my TV, and so far I've had nothing but good experience with it. So I just thought I'd mention that too. Now as we watch Sonic doing his thing, I just want to say thanks very much for taking the time to watch the video today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. I do love the Dreamcast, it is definitely my favourite console, so any time I get to spend with it is always a good thing. If you did enjoy the video, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing, and don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.